first things that we use, we've got to dimension all the wood to make the basic frame of, of the chair. So the most useful tool is a 21 inch bow saw. Um, this has got a peg tooth blade on it, which can be used for green and seasoned wood. We've also got, because quite a lot of the wood we're working with is green, so you can also, this one's got a, what they call a raker tooth on it, it the, the teeth are set so that um, it draws out the green, green wood stops the, the blade jamming up. Pull saw, very fine toothed and that, that gives you a really nice fine cut um, just to finish off the ends of rods. Another tool for just smoothing off any cut ends is a surf form, two sizes there. Um, they just take the rough edges off the, the end of round poles. Yeah, the other thing to do is... Uh, I'll get the side cut. Thank you very much. Yeah. Three sort of sizes, gauges of nails. Um, ring shank nails, so the ones with the ribs, which are really good at locking the bits of wood together. They just give a really strong fix. Um, so we use those for the main frame and when we're starting off the arm benders on the chair in, in the chunky part of the willow. Um, Galvanised nails of various sizes. These small ones we're using on the again on the on the skinnier bits of willow. The arm benders. They've got a zinc coating which weatherproofs them. And then two sizes of panel pin, 40 mils and 30 mils, and they've got a sheridized coating. And these are for fixing the uh, arm benders and the back benders together. Need to be a really narrow nail so they don't split the willow. Um, the holes that you're going to bang a nail through, we pre-drill to an extent just to stop the wood splitting. Because um, willow does have a density to do that. A cordless drill is a really handy piece of kit. Um, and if you want to go low tech and a bit more traditional, you could use a, a brace and bit or a hand brace like this, a little twist drill. When you're kind of sawing and nailing things and you've got sort of multiple rods you're trying to sit in place, it's really handy to have like a, a third hand in effect. So a quick clamp like that or a G clamp um, is a really useful thing. Secateurs. So just for lengthening up the smaller, the thinner rods, we'll use those. Um, this is the first of our back benders, provides the arch to the back of the chair. So I'm just going to pre-flex this around the jig. So the, the butt end of the rod, the chunkier end of the rod, there's more tension in there. So if you need to kind of, we'll bend it around the larger diameter, and then if you want to get that to flex a bit more, because sometimes they just want to stay in a straight line, you then use the smaller diameter. If you kind of treat it as four points of the compass, you can flex this in four directions in effect, and you, this would become, you know, like a piece of elastic almost. You could really do some interesting things with it. I pull around and sort of clamping it down with my left hand. Like so. Just be kind to the tip of the rod, so you can sort of pre-flex it a bit with your, just pressing your thumb in there. So we almost thread it through the space, and this is extremely overlong, so I, I would probably cut that down. But you can see how that's going to go. Yeah. Um, so I used to work, uh, I used to work on, on nature reserves um, as a ranger. So we were coppicing and cutting wood, and quite a lot of it was either going into habitat piles or getting burnt. So I just started playing with the stuff really. And, um, working on what the possibilities of actually doing something creative with with it was so that's kind of how I started and then did a few courses with um, basket makers and coppice crafts people and just built up my my skills and knowledge and kind of gone from there really so from becoming from being a hobby becoming a, a business um, I've managed two willow beds so that gives me the raw materials for things like these chairs and for plant supports and garden structures but I also make Sussex trugs and split wood baskets so for those I'm coppicing sweet chestnut and hazel um, so yeah different woods for different products let's say for example 
sweet chestnut. Um, it's generally cut on a 10 year rotation, um, or say 10 to 12 years. So as a minimum, you'd probably want six acres and you'd cut half an acre a year minimum. Um, it would give me enough materials for the products that I make and sell on. I made a chair. <laughs> and a chair to take home. Yeah.